It's one of Canada's fastest growing industries. The Canadian wine industry has skyrocketed 33 percent from a 6.8 billion dollar economic wallop in 2011 to more than 9 billion in 2015. This encompasses more than 670 wineries employing more than 37,000 Canadians. Welcome to the most wonderful time of the year as the MPs from the wine growing regions showcase their best vintages in this holiday season. Their submissions will be put to the taste test by the House of Commons residents sommelier that would be calgary mp michelle rebel well, let's get the representatives from the regions going east to west king's haunts mp scott bryson is promoting the pride of nova scotia new this year to the panel is ndp mp tracy ramsey who will be talking up the vintages from her riding of windsor essex and finally okanagan mp dan albus is showcasing the wines of beautiful british columbia and after fielding protests from their overlooked sensibilities, the Prince Edward County wine growing region has an entry by two wine trees by Michelle Rempel. Right, and she says they're darn good. They All are. right, let's get started. Nice let's work. go east. Scott, introduce your first one. Well, Don, I'm delighted to be here and presenting two of Nova Scotia's finest white wines. Benjamin Bridge uh, NV Method Classic. Uh, is a very nice sparkling wine, traditional method. It is, uh, in fact, Benjamin Bridge traditional sparkling wines are served at Michelin star restaurants in Paris and London, wow. including Gordon Ramsay's new Michelin three star restaurant wow. uh, in London. And uh, they're known across Canada for Nova 7. This is a really great traditional sparkling method, and, and uh, that's so enjoy. Okay, cheers. And the verdict is, Michelle. Well, I mean, I, I'm so biased. Scott <laughs> wines always win on the panel. I don't know. Now this is just so crisp. It's got that nice green apple finish, and it is Michelin star worthy. Um, this is just for, for anyone who can get their hands on it. This is one of Canada's best wines. It's lovely. It's delicious. Really, and it's, it's an honor to drink. Like so New Year's Eve. Sante. Okay. Absolutely. You know, that's a great point. Yeah. Raise a glass of Benjamin Bridge to ring in the new year, Scott. That's a wonderful, wonderful. All right, there you that's go. A, that's I'm, a good your toast second to fine grow, entry. A toast to growing the middle class and, <laughs> and a great Indeed. 2018. Entry number two. So, Luckett Vineyards, and Pete Luckett is, is a great Nova Scotian entrepreneur who came to Nova Scotia from England in the, in the 1970s. He started a few years ago Luckett Vineyards after running a very successful boutique uh, grocery uh, business. This uh, is his 2015 buried white. Now, mm. it is a white that is actually buried for aging eight feet under the ground wow. in Hungarian oak uh, uh, barrels. Mm. It is a Lacadie uh, grape, uh, which is the Nova Scotian mm. grape that we're known for, uh, but it is buried for over two years, actually, uh, in, uh, eight, feet un eight feet under. And, uh, eight and feet. it is, uh, and hope hopefully, uh, you know, you, you won't uh, drink too much, Don, and, and, <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and end up, uh, but, but this, this is a great, this what is a great wine. And you know what's like so this. wonderful about trying your wines year after year? This is the fifth year anniversary of the yeah, segment? absolutely. Like, your, your wines... Uh, They're wrapped rapidly improving. We talk about terroir, right? And we talk about <laughs> wines that come from, are evocative of the place. And this is, you know, it's well made, but it's also distinctly Nova Scotian. It's it's beautiful. And my congratulations to the winemaker. I just yeah. wish we could get more of this across Canada. Yeah. And also, I, I call dibs on that bottle Free after we're done, <laughs> done the segment. When you come to Nova Scotia, go to our wineries. We in, in our part of Nova Scotia, we've gone from right. two to 24 wineries since I was elected, and that's not just due to my consumption. <laughs> These are really <laughs> great wines. And and make sure you get up to Luckett Vineyards. The view from there of Cape Blomidon is right. magnificent. Tracy, Essex, yeah, I'm bring thrilled. it on. I I'm thrilled to be here as the new kid on the block. I don't think a lot of people think of southwestern Ontario when they think of wine, yep. but we have 18 wineries in my region, and what, we're growing. So I'm really happy to bring uh, a red from Cooper's Hawk, oh. uh, which is on Lake Erie North. North Shore and uh, again this is a really growing region mm. this is a beautiful winery on 67 acres that has a gorgeous restaurant event space mm. uh, we're really growing the tourism around this but this is uh, just a wonderful local wine a Cabernet Merlot that I bring to you. I don't think nice. of Essex but what did you think of this? Well it's, it's nice, nice to have a new kid on the block the yeah. reality is is that you know as we see the effects of climate change um, Canada is going to be looked at more and more different parts of our, our country as, as, as really strong places to grow wine. So it's mm -hmm. nice to see areas like yours experimenting with what works there and then developing wines which, you know, are accessible, they're, they're beautiful, 
and I think you're gonna have a lot more coming out of your region. This is a really nice, like, I mean, this is, could be just a great reception wine, you know, entertaining, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next one, Tracy. So next we have a white, and this is from Viewpoint Estate Winery, which is on the gorgeous shores of Lake Erie. Again, a really beautiful, uh, you know, family winery that's grown up. And this really, I, I picked this because it's the big V, and you know, it talks about the vision, and the vision of this wine is to showcase the character and the quality of Essex region wine. So I think that really sums up what we're trying to do down in the Essex Peely Island region, mm -hmm. and really growing our wine industry. And everybody needs a wine like this in their repertoire for the holiday season this is accessible it's somebody who you know it might shy away from wine but it's it's um, it's it's really fruit forward it's well balanced it's got some nice acidity and it's just a fun holiday wine that you could pair with a lot of food so nice choice and well done to the winemaker Thank all right Dan well done I'm I wanted to tell a little story today so I have brought uh, some wines from the South Okanagan and so uh, you know this first one uh, the Fume Franc is actually from Fairview Mountain Cellars and mm -hmm. it's the ultimate expression of oh, truth boy. and labeling mm -hmm. uh, something Vinter wow. uh, Bill Eggert oh, uh, stro believes in strongly yeah. and so with many wildfires we saw again this past summer uh, one of the most commonly asked questions in our area is uh, how how does the smoke affect the grapes and so this lovely creation uses Cabernet Franc uh, that are particularly susceptible to smoke infusion mm. so you can literally taste mm -hmm. uh, the smoky accents that are made out in, yes. and, and this is made fans of this vintage and that's why uh, Fairview Cellars remains one of BC's best uh, uh, wineries for producing big reds so I wow. uh, hope you enjoy this yeah. Dan this is so unique it is and, and you know for everyone watching this is this is it actually Smells almost peaty. Yes. Like, but it's not unpleasant. It actually integrates well into the wine. This is wow. such a, like, to any wine geeks that are watching this tonight, like, you have to get a bottle of this. This yeah. is so Canadian, and it's actually really well done. Oh, yeah. But it's smoky, like mm -hmm. super oh. fumé with extra fumé sauce. Yeah. And, and I, I always <laughs> like a story, but um, at the same token, because we're in airports all the time, I'm sure many of you have probably had the chance to read the WestJet magazine. So if you fly <laughs> WestJet, you'll know that Vinter uh, Tyler Halton was prominently featured in the on October edition of the Onboard magazine right. and was proclaimed the Okanagan Renegade winemaker. And so right. this is an amazing uh, uh, Viognier. Uh, that reaches out with stone fruit and uh, has elements of creme brulee, trailing licorice, and spice. Mm -hmm. And so with a finish that hits this, the uh, skin of a just right apricot. So many consider this Vognier uh, reference example what can be accomplished as a true taste of the Okanagan. And what I'm excited about is you have a small family winery competing with the best of them and getting their uh, name out. I don't think we've had a Viognier on the show before. So this is a grape. So that is native to the Rhone Valley of France. Um, the sub-appellation is actually called Condrieu, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. But it's a wine that you should pull off the shelf um, because it's, uh, you, to, to me, it, it always smells like kind of gooseberry. And if you ask like a wine snob, they'll almost say, well, it's got this pleasant smell of cat pee, which sounds so <laughs> pretentious. But it's just this really interesting um, wine that you, some people would kind of shy away from because they don't know what it is right. but it's a great food wine it's well structured and it actually grows really well in the region so it's and a again, beautiful it's, uh, example 2016 Vognier from uh, TH Wines mm -hmm. all right now Michelle is bouncing off the ceiling in the green room as we did makeup <laughs> saying I've got two really super wines let's go yes Prince Edward so County. the first one is uh, from Hinterland Vineyards in Prince Edward County uh, made by a just totally killer uh, female winemaker uh, Vicky Samaris She's making ridiculous wines. This is a sparkling wine that has been aged on its lees for five years. Now, what does that mean? Um, uh, part of the wine pr making production means uh, you have yeast, right, which is a catalyst for the chemical reaction that mm -hmm. creates alcohol and deliciousness. And those cells actually settle out during mm -hmm. the winemaking process. And oftentimes those are racked off. It's a process in the winemaking process that takes it away, but winemakers will sometimes let the wine sit on it to give it a more complex, ready mm. flavor. Um, this has been done so well. Um, this, to me, when you look at what this winery has done uh, in such a short period of time, this is a world-class sparkling wine, and, uh, you know, strong women make strong wine, and this is beautiful. <laughs> so, yeah. so cheers. Another, another, um, another a... nice wine for your New Year's celebration, mm -hmm. that's for sure, and really, really reasonably priced mm. for the quality that you get on this. And, of course, Norman Hardy. We haven't had Norm on the show in a while, Don, but, yes. you know, what's... Uh, 
Uh, Norman Hardy is one of Canada's best winemakers. This particular wine, the Pinot, uh, all of the grapes are sourced within, a, I think it's a 25 kilometer radius of his actual winemaking facility mm -hmm. in the county. Mm -hmm. Um, the county's had a lot of difficulties with freezing and frost, and to me, um, you know, th this I also believe is actually barrel pressed mm. uh, to give it. It's it's a gentler process. It's more difficult, but it just gives the wine this nuance. Uh, this is actually this is just such an artistic, beautiful production. Um, y you know, to be able to get this at something like the LCBO, it's just to me it speaks to the quality of Canadian wines writ large. But again, I think it's just such a evocative wine of the county and it's a real privilege to be able to drink this mm. and if any of you try and steal it from me after the segment <laughs> I'm going to bite your hand so there's that. Well <laughs> I gotta say we've done this as I said this is our fifth year and I don't know about you but I have noticed in increased oh, excellence okay. as it goes like is that climate change is that what the grapes I think, change? I think That's part of it and I mean like Scott change. you might you, and Dan you guys all might want to comment on this I think that Canadian winemakers have been experimenting a lot to try and figure out what grapes grow in what regions, what Canadian consumer demand is. Right. Um, there's been a lot of investment in the industry. When you look at areas like, you know, Scott's, yours, Essex, you talked about, you know, Tracy, there being a restaurant in your area. Mm -hmm. It's one of those great stories of economic diversification. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Canadian wine is starting to make it on the international stage. You know, Scott, you were talking about this being served in Michelin restaurants around the world. Um, people should start buying Canadian wines, even with an eye to seller them, um, because our, our production is being bought up and sent to other countries. Mm -hmm. Because other countries, I think, before we are in our domestic production, are really saying this is high quality. Well, the, the climate I, change, though, is mm -hmm. an, the, the, the trendering. Uh, Bordeaux region yes. uh, and Napa and Sonoma regions mm -hmm. less conducive to producing high quality whites is actually rendering Canadian wine regions more conducive mm -hmm. uh, and this this is something that's an opportunity there's also a great immigration story to this we need more new Canadians we need more people coming to Canada um, and there's a lot of expertise in other countries uh, on wine and a lot of the people who have been leading the Canadian wine industry initially, a lot of the pioneers are people who actually came here from other countries and there's a real opportunity to grow our population and to grow uh, our grapes and Juice. produce our wine. So you're going to be you're going to be the Napa Valley in, in in BC. Well, that's a big part of it. And Michelle was right on about the investment. We're seeing mm -hmm. a virtuous cycle. We're also seeing though uh, second generation farmers now coming to the table, where the family uh, winery is being passed on, and oftentimes the children have degrees in agriculture or in business and commerce, and so John's they are running. Painted Rock, his daughter. It's it's an amazing thing to see because the investment that's going in raises the quality. But now also the bar has been set. So, you know, people like Anthony Von Mandel, Harry McWaters are legends. But now those are considered to be the entry points. Uh, mm. And we'll just, see, keep, we'll just keep seeing, uh, you know, higher and higher uh, and, uh, expectations for Canadian wine. That's why it's so nice having you, a new region mm. we're sort of bringing in. So thank yeah, you, Tracy. And, and we have some big players. I mean, we have, you know, we have Colio that's yeah. available across that's right. Canada. We have Peely Island in my riding. Mm -hmm. You know, these are things that Beautiful. you'll find on any shelf in any store across Canada. Mm -hmm. So it's wonderful to be able to play across Canada as well. It's always a great pleasure. My most fun segment of the year. So anyway, let's have a cheers to 2017 wines there or these are the yes. 2017 wines in 2017 thank you all cheers